بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Once again, it's an honor to be amongst you discussing the verses of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us more to be able to bring these teachings into our lives and inshallah by the grace of him I'm almighty and the blessing of Quran and the words of Ahl Bayt getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are discussing Surah Al-Hamd we discussed Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and the action plan was that inshallah everything that we do we start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim everything if we want that uh, endeavor of us to be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to start good and to continue to be good and beneficial and to have a good conclusion inshallah we start keep saying bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim before everything that we start and then we uh, continue to uh, second verse which was alhamdulillah rabbil alameen and as we said the action plan was every day at least minimum 100 times we should remember that's minimum the more we do it's better uh, saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and believing in Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the people who do good to us. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, we also discussed about it that the action plan was that we bring mercy into our process of upbringing and educating our kids. We should have mercy. Not only that, we should be Ar Rahman, we should be having mercy within our action, within our talk within our behavior it should be all based on mercy today inshallah we will continue by the verse uh, with the verse maliki yawmiddin master of the day of retribution or master of the day of judgment a question might rise in your mind that is allah only the master and the owner of the day of judgment how about this world how about this day that we are living or is it only then the answer to this question will be that in this world that we are living currently we are in position of some materials that we claim to be the owners and that we have the ability to do whatever we want with them for example I have a house I have a car I own my body parts and I can do whatever I want. So based on this, we think in our minds, we've been a little bit confused and we've been a little bit distanced from the truth that everything that we have <coughs> belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the owner, he is the master. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, the master and all praise belong to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. So everything that we have, even though on paper we might uh, possess a property or a product or an object, we own it. But ultimately, it all belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the owner. So why in here we discuss and the verse says, Maliki Yawmiddin, Master of the Day of Retribution and the Day of Judgment. Because again, in this world, we think and within our lives <clears throat> we go and we base our actions that our body parts is ours and we are in control of it and we can do whatever we want but this verse should remind us every day that we read surah al-hamd in the morning two times dhuhr two times surah al-asr two times maghrib two times asha two times all of these Time, I mean, these many times that we read Surah Al Hamd and we reach to Maliki Yawmiddin, we should remember that on the day of judgment, there is no one and nothing can help us, and none of the ownership that we had in this world can benefit us. None of the relationships that we had with people on the day of judgment, it's completely different than this world. In this world, when we f uh, face a difficulty, we go and ask someone's help, someone that has connection somewhere and can benefit us and can resolve our issues. That person either can physically help us or can uh, talk to someone else, 
and help us or he can come with a group of people and help us or they can we can have a plan to get help because of things that we own or other people own which is not real ownership rather all we call it in Arabic word اعتباري. we just have it on paper it's written that I Mustafa Akhund own this place own this property own this laptop own this device it's only on papers and we see it but the truly everything belongs to, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if we believe this that everything it's owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of our body parts that we are using it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us to use them and whatever is in our position to use them to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be more careful of how do we use them for example our tongue and our hands and our legs when we say when we read the Quran inshallah I read the verse we shouldn't think that we are the true owner and nobody will ask us about these how did we use them did we use them for the right reason did we use them for the sake of Allah and Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam did you use them to get near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we use it to get away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did we use it toward haq and truth or we use it in aiding batil and falsehood on the day of judgment even these body parts that we thought it belongs to us and we can do whatever we want with it Allah in chapter 36 verse 65 says الْيَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ on this day today means the day of judgment today we shall seal their mouths and their hands shall speak to us and their feet shall bear witness concerning what they use to earn so on that day even these body parts that we did whatever that we did with them our mouth our tongue what we said with it was it a truth on that day of judgment we can say oh Allah I didn't say this or I said this it will be sealed hands will be talking our legs will bear witness what we did if it was halal aiding the truth or aiding batil and falsehood and committing a sin sin na'udhu billah so when we read every day Malik Yawm al -Din, we should remember that everything that is in our position are we using them in the best of manners in the aid and the path of Allah and Ahlul Bayt salam? if it's not we have to be careful in this day in this world that we are living we can maybe hide and uh, seal what we have done and make sure we don't let other people to know about it but on the day of judge judgment Malik Yawm al -Din, on that day nothing can benefit us even none of our positions and nothing that we had in our hand where we read also in chapter 82 verse 19 where Allah says يَوْمَ لَا تَمْلِكُ نَفْسٌ لِنَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لِلَّهِ it is a day meaning the day of judgment when no soul be of any avail to another soul and all command that day will belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh, I know this person, I can take help from this person. This person has connection somewhere. He can't, no, no. On that day, it's all in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though, let us open a good, bold parenthesis, even though on that day, we believe as a Shia, we believe in the intercession of Ahlul Bayt salam, that they will do shafa'a for us. But even that intercession is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will not intercede for a person that Allah doesn't want that person to be interceded for. But Allah has given them these vouchers to intercede for people that they see and their will is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their satisfaction is the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their anger is anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if they will to do something, that is what Allah wanted them to do. So Malik Yawm al-Din, on that day, no one will be able to help us. On that day, truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمْ Chapter 40 verse 16 to whom does the sovereignty belong today means the day of judgment to Allah the one the all paramount belongs Allah uh, belongs the sovereignty of uh, that day and the sovereignty of these of everything that he has created and no one can use whatever they had in their position uh, in this world to benefit them except their a'mal that they have gained so we have to be very very careful 
in this world that we are living, we have to be very careful and we have to be always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not leave us by ourselves. Because if He leaves us by ourselves, we think that we are in possession. We think that we can do whatever we want with our body parts, with our family, with our kids, with our wealth, with what we say and what we do and where we go and what we have an affair. This is not true because if, we, if he let us go, shaitan comes and he deviated us. They deviate us. Even he does try his best to deviate us. We need Allah's help to be on the right path. We see a story, a narration by one of the wives of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, where she said, it was in the middle of the night, he woke up and he left. I went and I searched for him. I saw him. He is in sujood, in prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's shedding tears and with humbleness and genuinely he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma wa la takilni ila nafsi tarfata aynan abada. Oh Allah, don't leave me to myself, even the amount of glance of an eye. How long that takes? Glance, glance. Even that amount, oh Allah, who is saying this? Ashraf al The best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this. But he says, oh Allah, don't leave me to myself, even for a glance of an eye. Because that moment, I might make decisions. I might do something, oh Allah, that is not what satisfies you and is not according to your teachings even though he is infallible he is ma'soom he has great infallibility he, he doesn't commit sin he doesn't think of a sin not at all and he's teaching you and i also so the point that we have to try to achieve is not to see these worldly ownerships as genuine and thinking that we can do whatever we want with them that will become a good action plan everything i'm about to say well, I'm using my body part, I'm using my tongue to say something. I have to see on the day of judgment, will I be able to answer for what I said? Every word that we utter, we, we are going to be uh, responsible for it. Everything that I, you, you do with my hands, everything that I do with my legs, everything that I do with my body parts, it's not, what, it's not mine that I can do whatever I want without, any, uh, without being accountable for it. No. On, on that day, Malik Yawmuddin, on that day Allah will say, well, I gave you this and I trusted you with these body parts. Couldn't you use it in aiding the truth? Couldn't you use it in helping a needy person? Couldn't you use it to defend the truth and uh, also fighting against falsehood? Couldn't you use that? So we are responsible for all of our body parts. And our master, the master, our commander of the, commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. He has reached a point that he says, لَوْ كُشِفَ الْغِطَاءُ مَزْدَتُ يَقِينَ Allah prays, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he removes the veils and the curtains from my eyes, and I see that, I see the day of judgment, and I see what I see from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is the true owner of everything that I have, my certainty won't increase. This is the role model that we have to follow his footsteps to be on his path. If the curtains are removed, my certainty that Allah owns everything from me, that I am accountable for everything that I do and my belief won't increase and my certainty won't increase because I have Faith, it's completely mastered, commander of the faithful. He is all Iman, completely. His action is Iman, his thinking is Iman. Everything that he says is Iman. So this is the person that we follow. This is the person that we are praying every day, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be on his path. So, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malik yawm al-Din. All praise belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because He's ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He's merciful. And He's Malik yawm al-Din. On the day of judgment, also believing in this, it will keep us straight. We make sure we don't deviate. Believing on the day, day of judgment and reminding ourselves of the day of judgment 
will keep us firm on the right path, making sure that we don't deviate, making sure that we don't commit sin. If we keep reminding ourselves, and that's a reminder, Malik Yawmuddin, when we recite Surah Al Hamd on a daily basis, it's not for us to say, to just start Salah, Allah Akbar, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Alamin. No, no, no. With everything that we say, we have to live every verse that we are reading. Malik Yawmuddin, in those verses that I'm reading, I keep reminding myself morning two times, Dhuhr and As four times, Maghrib and Asha four times, and more and more if we read. Hopefully we are reading Salat al-Layl and we are reading the Nawafil, the extra Mustahab Salah. We are reading it, we are reminding ourselves the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable. So an action plan will be, let us do something, whatever that can remind us, a picture, a drawing, an image, an object, so whatever it is that reminds us on the Day of Judgment. Let us place it in somewhere in the house, in, a, in our room, that by us seeing this, again, it can be this verse, Malik Yawmuddin. It can be an illustration or image or depiction of the Day of Qiyamah. It's something that reminds us on the Day of Judgment for us to keep seeing it. And by us seeing it, it keeps reminding us that the Day of Judgment, we are accountable for everything that we see, for everything that we hear, for everything that we say, for everything that our body parts does. We are responsible for that. That by itself, that reminder of Maliki Yawmuddin on a daily basis, inshallah, it will prevent us. That becomes salah. That inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. That indeed, salah, prayers will prevent us, will abstain us, and will forbid us from committing sin and fahsha and corruption. Why? Because we keep reminding ourselves, Maliki Yawmuddin. If I'm about to commit this sin, well, on the day of judgment, I'm going to be accountable for it. So, we need reminders that the Day of Judgment, we are responsible for everything that we say, for everything again that we see and hear and so on and so forth. Everything that we do basically, we are responsible for it inshallah. Yaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in inshallah will be in the next episode. We conclude, we will conclude this session by praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, begging Him to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi Ajrallah Ta'ala Farajuh Sharif, which is the most important dua. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyika al-Hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadhi sa'at wa fi kulli sa'at. Waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna. Hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a wa tumatta'u fiha tawila. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahameen.